How's it going, Dopamon fans? The NHL trade deadline is coming up tomorrow, so if you've been following along, you know we've been going team by team, breaking down every trade that's happened. And now we're on to the Tampa Bay Lightning, who've made two trades the past few days. But before we break them down, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. We're Dopamon, we talk hockey news, analysis, mock drafts, scouting reports, and we're also covering the trade deadline. So Ryan, what's the first trade that the Tampa Bay Lightning's made? The Tampa Bay Lightning kind of shook up a lot of people with their first trade. This is a couple days ago now. Um, Brendan Hagel was acquired by the Tampa Bay Lightning, in ex uh, as well as a 2022 fourth-round pick and a 2024 fourth-round pick in exchange for Taylor Radish, Boris Kachuk, a 2023 first-round pick, and a 2024 first-round pick, both of which are top 10 protected, which is kind of standard these days, but an absolute haul, and we'll explain, I think, why we think why this happened, an absolute haul for essentially a third-line winger. And it's very interesting, this trade, for a couple reasons. We'll start here just with... Brandon, oops, Brandon Hagel's page. Doesn't really jump off the page at you stat-wise. He's young, he's 23, but can't see my cursor, but I will point your attention to his cap hit on the top right there. One and a half million dollars until 2023-24. He is young, can score, plays a role that the Tampa Bay Lightning need, and he's cheap. That's the, that's, the, that's the thing. That's why they gave up so much. That's why they gave up two firsts. Because they're expecting those firsts to be late firsts. And it's Tampa, so they probably will be. Not a bad... Hey, Hegel's a guy uh, for a, a Tampa Bay team that has been notoriously uh, cap-stricken yeah. trying to, you know... Uh, make any which way to get you know under the cap uh, abusing the ltir however you you know view that i think you know whatever but uh they've uh they've been struggling and having uh, him around for three years at one and a half million to score a lot of goals that's uh uh tampa bay's a team that's been able to get that you know out of third line kind of guys maybe the absolute best out of them so uh we'll see and i think he i think it's gonna work out pretty well in tampa in my opinion for him yeah he's a great pickup i think controllable young wing cheap winger that can score and that they don't need him to score they're trying to figure out that third line obviously it was you know coleman gord and and uh goudreau last year barclay goudreau um was probably the best for their best line honestly could have been their first line it was so well used so they're trying to recreate something along those lines. Right now, it looks like it'll be, uh, and we can talk about another trade later, uh, that trade plus Brandon Hagel plus Ross Colton, maybe. We'll see. Uh, the two guys going the other way, I really like. First off is Taylor Radish. It's his second round pick back in 2016, 58th overall. They both are. Yeah, they both are. Uh, Boris Kachuk, the other guy, 44th overall. Uh, guys who have been in the system for a while, they're both 24 now. Not that they haven't done well in the minors, it's just they, they haven't... For, uh, Tampa's historically been pretty deep and have had a lot of you know, high-end skills, so these guys kind of got bumped down the depth chart, and apparently you know, they're good buddies, now they're going to Chicago together. Uh, Taylor Radish already with two points in two games in, in Chicago. They're going to get more... They're going to get more of a look. You know, both wingers, same age, same draft year. They're going to get more of a look in Chicago. And Chicago is, you know, they're, they're rebuilding. So getting two firsts and two prospects, I still consider these two prospects. I don't know about you, but getting I do as well. so many assets, so many assets for what is essentially to them a third line winger. Chicago doesn't care if he's cheap. They have cap space. Mm -hmm. but Tampa does I'll tell you what 
and they're they're desperate for it and they were willing to give up two firsts and you know uh if they faced a team that you know beats them in the first round they that could be a pretty high uh first round pick you know stuff happens in the playoffs so yeah it could be in the late teens early 20s potentially yeah i think a, a remarkable trade mm-hmm. for both sides i'll give the win to chicago um yeah big big w that's two first round picks two guys who you know were lost in the depth chart in tampa who have you know uh, we consider them prospects maybe because there's this question mark that how high can they really go can they be you know top six forwards are they gonna you know fill onto something else so like they they are prospects in that like the chicago is gonna give them you know that opportunity to to be that kind of uh to play into that kind of role and that's huge because uh, Chicago is going to need it through uh, the, the weird rebuild, retooling uh, process that they're going through right now. Absolutely. And another guy which we like, both of us like, you can announce this next trade. The second trade. I'm not a fan of, but I will announce it anyway. The Tampa Bay Lightning acquire from the Ottawa Senators, Nick Paul who is retained at 44.5% in exchange for Matthew Joseph and a fourth round pick, uh, the Tampa's fourth round pick. Uh, Nick Paul having a a fairly good season on a team that's doing awful right now. He's uh, got all the good, uh, all the good analytics and stuff. Uh, Nick Paul, uh, I believe he's like in his prime right now. He's fast. He's big. He's got enough skill to play with elite talent, but, you know, probably more of a third line kind of guy. I think he can definitely fly up and down the roster on maybe, you know, you get an injury in Tampa. You know, I said earlier in the video that Tampa has a a knack for bring, you know, turning a guy like Nick Paul and bringing the absolute best out of him and turning him to a guy like Kalorn, for instance, you know, just like a guy who can be a top six. Uh, kind of guy and maybe they can get that out of him if there's an injury they need him to fill in mix up the roster or something i think uh, i think it's a huge uh win for tampa uh when we see like them uh, taking out radish and kachuk and bringing in hagel and paul i think that really solidifies uh their forward uh, depth uh and for ottawa uh re- really stupid trade uh <laughs> pierre dorian called nick paul untouchable and then they offered him a four-year Ten million dollar contract. Uh, apparently, that's what's being reported out there. Uh, that's two and a half million a year for four years, which is it's kind of kind of low. I felt like he deserved at least three years, three and a half each, something along more along the lines of what Connor Brown had uh, gotten. Uh, so, uh, uh, and going the other way, of course, Matthew Joseph to the Ottawa Senators. I think he's a guy that you know could definitely. And maybe play with Matthew, uh, with uh, sorry Brady Kachuk, and have you know a real grit impact line for Ottawa. But I, I just I don't like the return for uh, that uh, Ottawa gets here, especially you know they retained some salary on Nick Paul to make it easier for Tampa to fit under the cap, and uh, that's 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 it. That's the whole trade. What do you I, think, Ryan? I'm gonna disagree with you. I like this for Ottawa. Um, I don't know if Ottawa was gonna end up signing Nick Paul. Being a UFA, Matthew Joseph is an RFA, a little bit more controllable, and I think honestly is a better fit for Ottawa right now. Um, I t- I do think he can slot into that middle six, like you said, potentially play play even with a guy like Brady Kachuk. So you know, decent, you know, decently quick. He's a pretty fast winger, as far as I know. Uh, Eighteen points in fifty eight games, nineteen and fifty six last year. 26 points in 70 games in 2018-19 compared to Nick Paul, who plays a little bit more of a role, mind you, but just pure stats-wise, I'd I'd take Matthew Joseph. Obviously, stats aren't everything, but along with the fourth-round pick to the quote-unquote rebuilding Ottawa Senators, um, bigger quotes, (laughs) um, Mm -hmm. I think Ottawa comes away with this one. I think Nick Paul will be really, really good in Tampa and it'll make Ottawa fans like yourself question it a little bit, but I think anybody going to Tampa Bay is going to be better depending on what team, no matter what team they're coming from. Absolutely. Um, So you're going to get, you know, better numbers out of Nick Paul. He's going to be in the playoffs. He's going to have the 
spotlight on him and you're gonna go god damn it we gave up that guy but matthew joseph is no slouch and i think you should be excited for a guy like him maybe we'll see there's um something we've mentioned on the channel you know before i think maybe you mentioned it in the 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 leafs trade speculation video we did and nick paul's the kind of guy that when you are a playoff team, you want to like almost like build around him and your depth and stuff. He's a guy that, you know, you should Ottawa have traded and, you know, kept when you when you're a winning team, you want him around. But hey, you know, Matthew Joseph brings his own type of intangibles. And maybe you're right. Maybe he in Ottawa is like a perfect type of fit. Uh, they've been mixing around uh, huge options with uh, Drake Batherson out uh, on the on the right wing. They've put Tim Stutzla down the middle now, so everything's up in the air in Ottawa, and Matthew Joseph will have a big opportunity for himself to maybe crack uh, higher in the roster than he would have in Tampa. So, mm -hmm. but the primary team in this this video, anyway, Tampa Bay Lightning, like a lot of the teams in their division, are absolutely gassed from a draft pick perspective. Uh, and you can't see my cursor or whatever, right? But first round pick this year third round pick next year and then no first round pick in either of the next two years they are going for it they are obviously in full championship mode they won the last two why the hell not keep trying for it uh, their forward group depth is probably where they were most vulnerable i think their defensive group is essentially the same right if not exactly the same andre vasilevsky is still vasilevsky so it's just the the bottom six that they were worried about and getting guys like Brandon Hagel and Nick Paul and bringing in the off season guy like Corey Perry and re-upping Patrick Maroon. I Tampa is still scary as ever. What the hell? How does Tampa keep dating away with this? <laughs> <laughs> um, just nonsense. And they're going to probably lose Andre Palat in the off season. So they'll have to do an, again, another round of, you know, retooling, but the core is, you know, the core of this team is around for a long time, so this Tampa team might be good for a while longer. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if there's any fatigue going into the playoffs. Obviously, the you know the real winner of this trade will be decided after the playoffs have started and the draft picks have happened, and you know we won't know anything about that for another probably ten years. So who knows? Maybe they'll look back on it and hate this draft or hate this trade or what they gave up for. Brandon Hagel, who didn't end up doing anything, maybe, but or they could win another cup and be the third first team in a long, long time to win three cups in a row. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think they can do it? This isn't a playoff prediction video, but uh, you know what? I think that they have, you know, the hole that they had in their roster in their bottom six. Now they have 12 excellent forwards who are just going to play the role in their perfect spot those 12 if they can stay healthy i really like tampa right now and uh it's going to be another crazy uh florida tampa probably battle on the playoffs so yeah florida tampa toronto boston i don't want to play any one of those teams that's terrifying and they're gonna have to play each other in the first round that's great anywho everything else for these trades Nope, oh, that's it until uh, the next few big trades come in. That's it from us for tonight. Yep, yeah, we'll be bringing up trade deadline videos as they happen, just recaps of teams. Maybe if something crazy happens, we'll do an individual video breaking down that one trade. Uh, but yeah, until next time, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed and got this far, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. If you like hockey like we do, join us. We are on the road to a thousand subscribers. I forgot to say that a couple times in the last few videos. So subscribe, help us out. We really appreciate it. Peace.